Hi everyone, Bill Lethman here for MoneyEvolution.com. In today's video, I'm gonna be helping you to answer the question, what is a fiduciary? More specifically, I'm gonna be talking about some of the differences between a fiduciary and a financial advisor. So this is something that's obviously been getting a lot of attention here over the last couple of years, especially with the Department of Labor, uh, trying to create their definitions for a fiduciary standard. Um, so hopefully this video gives you some, uh, some great ammunition to ask some of the right questions as you're maybe exploring some options for yourself and for your portfolios. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's talk about a definition here. So I went out on the internet, uh, lots of different uh, topics and information pertaining to this, but one definition I found on the internet said that only fiduciary advisors are legally and ethically required to put your best interest before that of their own. Um, another analogy that I saw that, that kind of made sense to a degree was imagine you're going out to buy a new suit. Uh, with a financial advisor, uh, the salesman is uh, only required to sell you a suit that fits, whereas a fiduciary advisor is required to not only sell you a suit that fits, but also that looks good on you. So when you, when you see those kinds of definitions and hear that analogy, then it, it might become very clear that you need to find a fiduciary financial advisor. Um, one of the reasons that the fiduciary has been getting a lot of attention here is what we're trying to do, I think what the industry is trying to do hopefully is to eliminate or at least reduce as many of the potential conflicts of interest that might exist out there. Uh, one of those primary conflicts of interest pertains to commissions, you know, and the idea there behind that is that if uh, an advisor is getting paid a commission to recommend a product or to sell you a product, um, that they may be doing that more for their own best interest, for them getting the commission, as opposed to doing what is actually right for yourself and your portfolio. So one of the reasons that, um, that I kind of take some uh, maybe a little bit of disagreement with that, uh, that whole premise there is, again, to go back to that suit analogy. So where you buy your suit or where you go shopping for your suit may have a very a uh, big difference on what you end up walking out of that store with. You know, so for example, if you go to, um, to one store, uh, they may uh, be fiduciaries, they may sell you the suit that looks best on you that they have available in that store, but they may have a very limited inventory. They may not sell all of the brands. Uh, you may go into another store, uh, maybe a very high-end store, and they could sell you a suit that looks absolutely phenomenal on you, uh, but that suit might cost $5,000 and you really went in looking for a suit that was maybe in the $500 range. You know? So even though that looks the best on you, there still are some differences with that. And we see those kinds of differences with uh, the financial world as well, because uh, what we've experienced is that um, even though some of these fiduciary advisors um, may not have an incentive to sell different products, they may in a lot of cases be dealing with a smaller investment pool. Uh, so there's certain investments that are only basically offered as a commission-based product. Some of those are insurance uh, products that um, may not be appropriate for you, but they may be appropriate for somebody else. Uh, things like annuities, uh, which maybe fit into a lot of our clients' uh, portfolios and things like that. Um, you may be missing out on some of that advice because that uh, particular financial advisor just simply doesn't have those, those options uh, available. Um, a lot of firms, too, will have portfolios that are managed primarily by their own firm. So again, you're, you're dealing with that uh, smaller investment pool. Uh, another area here too is fees. You know, so the idea with a fiduciary is that you're, char you're being charged a fee for the management of the portfolio and it doesn't matter what investments uh, they're putting into that. Uh, however, the fee can vary widely for essentially the same thing from one firm to another. So you may uh, have one firm that's charging uh, 1%, another firm could be charging 1.5 or 2%, and essentially you're getting exactly the same thing. So again, uh, not saying that there's a conflict of interest with that, but again, it's something to be aware of as you're exploring this uh, fiduciary option here. Um, the other thing too, where there are potentially some conflicts of interest, and uh, again, uh, we're charging a fee, or the fiduciary advisor is charging a fee for managing a portfolio, and let's say you just inherited $200,000 and you go to your financial advisor and say, what do you think I should do with this? Um, I'm thinking about maybe paying my house off or I'm thinking about maybe investing that. What should I do? Um, you hope that that financial advisor is going to help you make the best decision that's based on your individual situation. Uh, but again, even though there's not a commission involved, there is a financial incentive for that financial advisor to tell you to bring that money uh, to their firm so they can make fees off of uh, that portfolio. 
And, um, and so ultimately, I think whether you're hiring a fiduciary or you're working with a financial advisor, um, it still ultimately is going to come down to who you're working with. You know, and you want to first and foremost find somebody that is going to be compatible with you, somebody that you uh, believe is trustworthy and honest, that has a good reputation, uh, that maybe also deals with um, similar clients to what your situation is. You know, maybe that's a particular company that you work for or a particular stage of your life if you're planning for retirement or um, you're going through a transitional period with your finances. You want to find somebody that uh, has some knowledge and expertise with, uh, with your particular situation. I think that's first and foremost, uh, number one. And then whether you're hiring them as a fiduciary or as a financial advisor, um, Sometimes it might be better to pay a commission on something or there's a, a product or uh, something that you want access to that's only commission based, but you want to understand what those fees are. And every financial advisor, whether a fiduciary or not, should do a very good job explaining to you what all of those fees are and even explaining things that are uh, questions that maybe you didn't even know to ask. And that's going to be something very important too. So just because you didn't ask about a particular fee doesn't mean that that financial advisor shouldn't talk to you about that or shouldn't explain that uh, to you. Um, so we've chosen to remain uh, just a standard financial advisor primarily for uh, the reason that we didn't want to limit any of the investments or any of the um, opportunities that we might have available for our client. And so for that, we have a pretty open architecture. Uh, there's really very, very few investments that we don't or can't work with for our clients. So uh, if a client comes to us and maybe they have a need for a specific uh, product or uh, service, um, we're not going to recommend against that simply because we don't have that option available to them. You know, we're going to be able to say, hey, we uh, have that available and we like it because of this or we have it available, uh, but this is why we think something else might be better for you. So uh, we, we like to think that we're going to be able to explore and explain all of those different options and, um, and different investments uh, well to clients. Um, so there's different levels of fiduciary. There's different uh, uh, types of financial advisors that are out there. But again, you want to find somebody that you like and you trust and uh, can help you with your situation and you want to make sure that they're explaining all of the fees. Um, there is one last um, type of fiduciary that I want to talk a little bit about and if we're talking about eliminating conflicts of interest there is something called a fee only financial advisor and so this would be somebody that you pay an uh, either an upfront or an ongoing financial planning fee simply for financial planning advice and this individual uh, doesn't have any products or investments or anything to sell you. Uh, they're just simply looking at your financial situation and, and helping you uh, make those decisions. And, um, and so that's probably one of the cleanest forms of a uh, financial advisor or fiduciary out there. Uh, there's a couple issues with that, potentially. One is that uh, many of these uh, fee-only financial advisors, you're, you're probably going to pay at least I would say $1,000 or more to get an initial plan. Some of these financial advisors that just do fee only, uh, I've heard charge sometimes 10 or 15, sometimes I've heard as much as $20,000 a year just for that financial planning advice. So it can get a little bit uh, expensive. And then ultimately, you're still gonna have to go out and find these investments or these products somewhere else, You know, whether they're recommending them or telling you to go to somebody else, or you're gonna have to find those investments on your own. So that's still, um, again, it does. there's no perfect uh, solution for that. Um, we do have a fee-only uh, financial planning service, even though we do offer some of these other investments and other um, uh, products out there. We do have a platform where somebody can pay for a, an initial financial plan. It's not tied to any specific investment recommendations. Uh, we also have the ability to keep that relationship going on an ongoing basis where it's uh, a monthly subscription-based planning service. Um, we kept it what I think is pretty reasonable, $99 a month for that ongoing financial planning. Um, that could be a standalone, so if you just want that financial planning advice, or it could be in addition to some of the other investments that we might be helping you manage depending on what kinds of needs you have and everything. So um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. I hope that clarifies a little bit because again, it's one of those topics that does 
seem to have a lot of confusion around it. Uh, and if you'd like to talk with us or explore some of the opportunities with the financial planning that we do, uh, I think we've talked about this in most of our videos, but we do a what's called a Wealth Vision Comprehensive Financial Plan. It's a one-time fee of $299 uh, to put together a pretty complete analysis, cash flow based to look at your situation, help you with some of your planning goals. And then once that plan is done, then we can start to explore what other investments or financial planning tools that we might have that can fit within that uh, financial plan. So uh, if you're interested in that or learning more about it, we'll put our number up on the screen here. We will have a link in the description below that you can click on, sign up for what we call a free introductory call with me, and we can learn a little bit about your situation and see if it's something that could be right for you. But uh, anyway, hope that's been helpful with that. Have a great day, and I'll see you back in one of my next videos. Thanks.